Hi guys, this is Hell Hades, and this is another raid Shadow Legends video. So today we're going to do a guide on Tyrell, Tyrell the Beast, the beastly epic that everybody wants, and uh, he pretty much lives up to that name. He is pretty insane for an epic. He's probably one of the ones that's as close to a legendary as you can get for being an epic. So let's go over his skills first. Uh, he's got an A1, which has got a decrease attack on it. Um, so Unbooked, it's got a 40% chance of landing the big version of decreased attack for two turns. It actually gets two swings at this, so it's got two lots of 40% chance. And then if you book him up, it actually goes up to 50. So the chances are, if he's booked, he's going to hit this decreased attack pretty much every time he swings. Uh, clan boss, this is insane. You know, this is exactly what you need for clan boss. That's why he's so well known. Um, but it's actually not all he's got in his kit. So let's have a look at some of the other abilities. He's got a AOE decreased defense. Um, and again, when booked, it's a 100% chance. So it's the big version of decreased defense. In the clan boss, he puts on obviously a normal decreased defense, which again is a really strong debuff. If he's already got that decreased attack on, on the target, let's say we're in the arena, and then he swings in with this decreased defense, he actually puts them asleep for one turn as well. So this synergizes really well if you've got an AOE decrease attacker that goes before him. Um, and generally, it's a great setup for a nuker. So, you know, if you've got somebody in the arena, you, you lay this decrease defense, you then slam your damage over the top of it, and quite often you'll one-shot people. It's also a great setup in dungeons. So if you're in dragons, for example, doing the waves, you throw in the decrease defense, and then you get your nuker coming over the top to slam people. Really good ability then got a really good A3 as well. So this is attacks one enemy, decrease the target turn meter by 50%. And if you fully deplete, deplete the turn meter, it, it puts a stun on for two turns. I mean, wow. A two turn stun is actually mental. Um, so this isn't for dungeon bosses or anything like that. This is for arena really. But the turn meter piece does work against the, uh, things like spiders or fire knights or you know any of the bosses apart from dragon so this again is good it's not good for clan boss but it's good for other parts of the game so he then has got an aura which is in increased ally defense in all battles so it works everywhere including clan boss by 25 percent all in all he is an insane epic insane um one of the nice things about him as well, so all of his abilities are defense based, so they scale on defense. He starts off with a pretty chunky amount of defense anyway, um, and you can kind of boost it up quite nicely. He's got pretty average speed, I'd say, but not slow, and he's got pretty average to decent HP as well. So all in all, his stat sets are good, his abilities are insane. Um, so what I'm going to show you here is how I built mine. Uh, so let's go into Masteries. The masteries, pretty much for all areas of the game, you're going to want to go diagonal down, straight down. That's your clan boss build. But it's also great for a spider build. It's good for dungeon build. Probably the only place where this is not super relevant is arena, but it's still not bad. And then I've got mine on a support tree. So basically it's more defense, takes less damage on a hit, um, into reduced damage, reduced damage, chance to counter attack, chance to counter attack. This is kind of more like a clan boss setup, really. Now, some people will go clan boss setup and basically bring down accuracy, accuracy, accuracy into the book, which gives you more stats, and then down into increased chance to land the debuff and extend debuff. This is also a really good build. Uh, the reason why I've gone for defensive build is because I actually don't use Tayrell in my clan boss team anymore, and I use him more for dungeons, so this is better for me. If I was using it for a clan boss and I don't have someone to extend the debuffs, then I probably would go support tree. Either tree is viable actually, because his A1 hits so well. If you've got a counter attacker, then actually the one the way I've got it set up here is also relevant for clan boss. So in terms of the way I've built mine then, so I've got life steal set and speed set. Um, and pretty much what you'll see is I go defense gloves, defense chest, speed boots. And then obviously uh, I'm looking for good accuracy rolls, I'm looking for speed rolls, I'm looking for crit rates. 
crit damage. Um, these aren't the best pieces I've got in my kit, by the way. I'm just kind of this is a nice one, um, and this is quite a nice one. This shield probably is not ideal. Actually, don't need as much speed as I've got, so maybe I want to be over 191 because I'm going to show you the Ultra Nightmare Clan boss. So I do need some speed on the roll, but that's not ideal. This is a much better piece for him, actually. See, more accuracy, more crit rate, more speed. Do I need? Can I deal with that speed? Yes, I can. I basically, I need to keep my speed in between 191 and 209. Actually, can I deal with it? No, I can't. I'm already a bit quick. Um, so then you kind of look and, you know, do I need to kind of move some bits around to make it work? And it's probably too much of a hassle. So ideally, I would remove that and I'd probably only go with maybe a, a five star set of speed boots or an even better thing you can do if you've got the ability to is try and find yourself a set of defensive boots and completely move the speed boots completely but anyway we got we got a decent setup here anyway so um, I'm just going to do a quick ratings and then we're going to show you some of the different content so clan boss is a five out of five he's one of the top kind of three or four decrease attack champions in the game Decrease attack, if you've seen any of my clan boss videos, is the most important debuff that you can have, especially when you get past Brutal. Green at offense, I'd say he's a strong 4 because of his ability to do an AoE decrease defense. Um, campaign, he's actually... So he's, not, he's not a campaign farmer as you would expect in terms of Brutal. He's not quick, but he's not bad either. But I'm going to give him a high score because he's one of the few people that can really shine in Nightmare Campaign. Very good. You know, like anyone, he's good. Green of Defense, he's pretty good. Yeah, I'd say he's a 4. Dragons, he's excellent because of his ability to do the AoE decreased defense. Spiders, he's excellent as well. He's got a turn meter reduction, decreased attack, decreased defense, sets the rest of your team up really well. Ice Golem, he's excellent. Quite often been in my teams. Finites is not so good. He's his kit is okay. He's got a two two hit A1, which is okay. He's got a decreased defense, which helps with waves. Uh maybe he's a four actually. He's probably a four. And then all the keeps, he's just good. Uh, there's nothing in the keeps. I don't even know why I bother rating the keeps, because they're just fodder really, once you're at kind of end game. Um and he's also really useful in your faction war team, which doesn't get covered here. So that's good. Let's get into some content then. So I'm going to show you first a couple of the dungeons. So let's get into uh, let's get into a dragon run. So what I use him for here, let's take Zargala out. He does a similar job. So he's going to do a decrease attack, uh, sorry, decrease defense on all of the enemy wave. And then my nukers are going to come in over the top of that and absolutely nuke the opposition. So watch the way this works. He's also good just in general. So decrease defense. Bad L lets me do more damage. Slam 1. Slam 2. Timar then resets abilities. And we go on to wave 2. Wave 2. Decrease defense. Same, same thing we've just seen. Slam 1. Slam 2. Nuke. Nuke. And let's go and face the dragon, 23 seconds in. He's also good here because he decreases attack on the dragon. So the dragon's not going to hit us as hard. And he's also going to get that decreased defense off soon. His A3 does not work for us, but that's the only part of his kit here that isn't going to do any work. But we've got a decreased defense on, a decreased attack so that if the dragon does lay his, his fire that it doesn't hit us as hard. And it also sets up my Royal Guards to just come straight in again with that slam. You see here, we're going to end up hopefully close to a minute or so. And that is all she wrote, 55 seconds. Bam! Um, and did we get anything good? Actually, we did. We got a nice pair of gloves. I will take that. So that is Tayrell showing off in Dragon. Clearly, that's my speed farm. But forget the fact that I've got two raw guards and all this sort of stuff. He is really effective here. The AoE, decreased defense. Because he's defense-based as well, we can take a hit. If you've got one Royal Guard, if you've got a Zargala in the team, if you've got somebody else who's going to come over like a Bellower, they will also do a lot of damage. So that is him on Dragons. Let's see him on Spiders. Spiders, again, he's, he's quite often part of my team. So 
my speed nuke team. I'm going to take that off for this. So we're going to show you a, a kind of speed farm with a Tyrell. Tyrell's in there for the reduced defense. I'm going to put in a two Royal Guards again. You can definitely do this without two Royal Guards. You know, I've got a number of teams that I set up for people where it's a Steel Skull, a Cold Heart, a Tyrell, a number of different champions. I'm just trying to show you stuff that's a bit quicker. Um, so two Royal Guards, Tyrell is going to reduce defense. These two are going to nuke over the top. Um, Five Miles are going to reset abilities. And see it is going to place weak. See how this runs. So the the order of play here is really important. You see, decrease defense first, then the weaken, then the nuke, then the second nuke, then the reset, and then we go into same again. Rinse and repeat. And should clear the spider in about 25 26 seconds. Yeah, so you see his effectiveness there is the kind of decreased defense. You can definitely do him in loads of setups. I'm just trying to show you quick stuff so that it's not going to take up half your day, but it's really effective. Those two ice golems, I've had him in my team, or I have him in teams that I run quite often. This is a setup that can work um, defense down, two support champs, two damage champs. I should have taken him out perhaps for um what an umbral umbral helps with the waves quite a bit so we've got defense decrease from Tyrell lots of shielding some nukes coming in 60 odd k from umbral Tia can come in for the big nukes as well this gets us through the waves really quickly. 240k, see you later. And kind of rinse and repeat, wait for those cooldowns to come back off. We tend to, to get through waves, I don't know, maybe about a minute or so we'll get to the boss. Um, there's a number of teams you can run in this, but Tayrell is, is definitely somebody that is very useful. Decreased defense goes back on again. That's when you start getting to the point where you're going to start doing some damage. See, I might have our ability back again, actually. Yes, there you go. 350k. See you later. Uh, and then, obviously, we get to the main part of the fight. This is just quite a slow grind of a fight, this one. No matter what team you put in. can't really put in a kind of nuke team because it comes straight back at you. So, I find this part of the fight normally lasts at least a couple of minutes. Um, we probably will lose someone along the way, maybe a Seer. But she's done her job by kind of absolutely nuking us through the rest of the content. And yeah, and actually I've not got a built very tanky, I've got a built as a kind of nuke arena champ right now, so she's not built to withstand the big slams that come from this guy. But uh, what I'll do, I'll cut it here and, and just kind of show you it when we get towards the end, because it's it can be a bit dull this fight. But I mean you can see the main thing you can see is we're no risk. Tayrell's in there mainly for his decreased defence at this stage and um, and kind of support on the ads. So we did it, it was super slow. Actually I lost Seer and Umbral quite early on, <laughs> so perhaps it wasn't the best uh, team set up, it was quick for the ways but slow for the boss. Anyway you can see he's, he's super capable of doing it and there's numbers of teams that can kind of help him get there much quicker than that. Um, okay, so let's show Fire Knights as well. Uh, so Fire Knights is a red affinity which makes Tayrell pretty bad, actually I won't show you Fire Knights. He is not ideal for this dungeon, pretty good in the waves, going to struggle against the boss. Well, I'll, show you, I'll show you it anyway. I'll show you it anyway. So we've got defense down, got these two. Uh, that's all good. Um, probably just need somebody else that gives us a bit more protection. Somebody that is going quicker. Yeah, let's use this guy. Arbiter keeps us alive. Damage here. Decreased defense for waves. Should get through it with this setup. Decreased defense goes on. We get our counter attacks up, which probably don't need as early as that, but it's not a bad thing. For when they start to come at us. Obviously, because of the speed that we're running, actually, the counter attacks tend to run out too quick. Level. Arbiter's obviously just kind of healing us, keeping us going. Payroll does a decent amount of damage and also he kind of focuses people in on him because he's the, the negative affinity. 
So it's not a terrible idea because that way the cold hearts do manage to stay alive. But it certainly doesn't become like a speed run. Um, but not everyone can do speed runs anyway, so it's perhaps not a, a bad thing to show. So this kind of flows through to get to the actual boss. Uh, I'll skip ahead to the boss part of the fight because it's very similar for the next wave. So we get to the boss. The idea is that a um, two four hits a ones. So that's someone. They're the people that are going to get the shield down mostly. Do have the counter attack that goes up from the um, gold crusher. But you see here we kind of run through the counter attacks, which is a bit annoying. We're only actually going to get one counter attack on this go. It's trouble with the RNG on this fight, really. Hero's not bad. He gets a double hit in, which, you know, as long as he kind of keeps that going, gives us a good amount of shield depletion. And then, riding the RNG lands in a good way, like here, we should get a decreased defense from the Tyro now. I didn't do it. But we could have got a decreased defense there, which would have improved the damage that we get out of our Cold Hearts. Yeah, and we've got a full on uh, counter attack coming through for the whole team this time, which is much better. Opens it up for the cold uh, for the heart seekers. We also get decrease um, turn meter from Tyrell, which is useful. So he yeah, actually does have a reasonable amount of use. He's just a weak affinity, which is why I kind of didn't want to put him in because you wouldn't normally run a blue into a red dungeon because his abilities have got a good chance of missing. And obviously, you know, things like the um, Decreased defense, you want somebody who's going to land that every time, really. But, um, yeah, it's going to end up being a reasonable run. I don't, again, this is one of these dungeons that it's quite hard to get really fast teams running. But this is uh, a pretty reasonable setup. Beacon on. Kind of just waiting, really, for the cold hearts to get there. A big hit back. But then, see that decreased turn meter? Kind of landed at a nice time again. This means that we've got more chance to, to lay into the boss. Landed the decreased defense this time, so we should get a big heart seeker now from this cold heart. Bam, there we go. And that's the finites. A piece of rubbish fury. Go away, fury set. Um, okay, so let's move on to campaign. So in terms of just doing like brutal 12 free, he's decent. Decent enough. You're going to be your campaign farmer? Probably not, unless you really don't have a better one. Um, could he do it? Yeah, I expect he could probably do it. He'd do it reasonably slowly, I think. He has to be in life still set for this to work, but we kind of do a decent amount of nukage. Um, what he is, though, is an option for the nightmare campaign, and a good option at that. So he will. Here we go, actually. Doing pretty well, it's not too bad. He will actually go in and do some work in Nightmare Campaign in Life Still Set, so I'll show you that in a second as well. You see here, we're kind of on the final wave. It's going to be what, a 30 odd second run, so it's not good, but it's not bad either. If that's what you've got in your team, that's pretty pretty okay. Um, so I'm going to throw it onto Nightmare, and um, yeah, let's see how he does here. But yeah, so on Nightmare, I don't know if he's going to be able to do this solo actually, but I know that I used him with a support. So I actually used him with Warlord to farm right the way up to 12.7 um, 12, on Nightmare. Let's just see if he can be a solo farmer. These guys obviously got a lot more, a lot more damage and a lot more health. What we've just seen in, in Brutal. I'm not sure if he's going to actually survive the Onslaught. He's also, he is one of the champions that's possible to get you through 12-7 if you use him with Paragon. That's how I did it. Tara was my damage dealer. Paragon was the person who soaked up all the damage. So maybe we would be able to do it. It's going to be pretty slow, I think. Um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll, I'll pause and I'll sort of come back to the end of the, the last wave if we do it. Um, see what you think but yeah I mean actually so it's not in too much problem as soon as he gets rid of one of the way one member of a wave it seems like he's probably just about strong enough so yeah I mean he has done it he's done it in under four minutes it's not quick by any stretch but um, he is possible then to solo uh, nightmare so that's good 
And as I said, he is also one of the few that can do 12-7 with Paragon. So he is an answer to a number of things. Perhaps I'll just show you that kind of cheese, what that cheesy Paragon thing looks like. I really hate that this is what you need to do to get through 12-7. I think it's a stupid setup, but I'll show you anyway. Paragon, just quickly, I'll show you his gear. Um, you haven't seen this before. Pretty much, I've just got him in speed rolls. He's not got any good gear at all. Low health, low defense. He's 200 speed, that's the main thing. 200 speed, and his second skill, damage control, is booked. And you need it booked. Uh, so he's level 40, he's 200 speed, and his second skill is booked. And then basically you run into the, the dungeon, make sure you're not on auto. So auto off, yeah. Um, and then basically Tayrell's doing the work. Aragon just makes himself unkillable constantly with his A2. And then Tayrell goes in and does the damage. He takes all the hits. Paragon takes all the hits. He knocks him down to no health, but he just keeps going, taking the hits, taking the hits. All the while, Tayrell is doing damage. You need to manually, you can't alter it, because Paragon will not do this naturally. He'll try and protect Tayrell. And the only challenge you've got is whether or not you can do it in the time frame, the 10 minutes. But this is the way that I got through 12-7. So, uh, and this is just literally rinse and repeat. Every time that's up, you cast it back on yourself. Uh, what I'll do is I'll skip forward here to the end fight and you can kind of see the, the boss part of it as well. But yeah, this is all it is. It's really boring. <laughs> okay, so I cheese my way to the boss and it's the same thing again on this part. So I'm just putting him unkillable. Anytime the boss does that kind of crazy, unpredictable, stupid move. Basically, he's going to suck it up, and he's sucking up all the damage here. So look at this, all the damage coming to him. Um, and Tayrell just goes in and wins the fight, basically. We're five minutes in here, so it's not like it's a quick encounter. But uh, I must have, I don't know, I must have tried it 20 times. And every time it felt like this boss was just getting his, um, his stupid nuke ability. Like, I don't know couple of seconds into the fight or something and it just got to a point where it was getting ridiculous. So we had to pull the cheese out. I don't like doing it. I don't like having to beat a boss in such a stupid way. But this is what we do. Um, I think there's might be some other champions that do something similar. I've not really looked into it. Pretty much as soon as I'd finished Nightmare Campaign, I have not come back to Nightmare Campaign. So uh, there you go guys. This is a bit of a privilege for you to see me back in here. <laughs> Nearly there, there we go, 6 minutes 50, and that's stage 7 free start. So it's boring, it's, it's a bit of a crap way of doing it, but it's the only way that i found. So let's just show a quick arena fight so you can see what you can do in arena. Um, apologies if this video is running long, I'm trying to show you lots of different content to look at. So what we're going to do is we're going to put him, uh, we're going to go Arbiter speed lead, so you can use anyone, maybe I'd, I actually won't use Arbiter, I'll go for my new charisma speed lead. Uh, we're going to use going to use my frost use hunger to uh, to do the freeze a rail is going to be in there for decreased defense gold crown is going to be my nuke and um, I think seer will be my backup So the idea is I should go first, but if I don't, then I'm probably going to die. <laughs> I would get a nice counter-attack there from uh, Goldtrown. This is the worst going you've ever seen. How this works. And I'm dead. Alright, let's 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 stop trying to be cocky and let's actually put a proper speed lead in. Because <laughs> obviously that's not a bad team. So, let's go this way. Speed lead, into freeze, into... Um, Decrease defense into nuke. This is how it should actually be set up. Change this every time. There she is. Let's go this way. So the idea is Tayrell was part of the setup basically. So auto, fast, freeze. He takes one out. Decrease defense. Oh, we didn't do it. So I didn't realize that actually. So I thought on auto he would just decrease defense first. It looks like he doesn't want to do that. But what I'd actually like him to do. Um, I'd 
like him to do if I do it on manual. So let's run through the auto part again. Freeze. Give someone some damage. Comes to Tyrell, I'd then like him to do this move. Decrease defense, which is what I would do on manual. Decreases everyone's defense. Which then sets up my Skull Crown to whilst I've got decreased defense coming with the nukes. Um, yeah, interesting. Anyway, that's what, that's what his use is in Arena. He does have that ability where he does uh, decreased turn meter and stuff as well. But um, yeah, that is Tayrell in the Arena. So, lastly then, let's get into Clan Boss. This is what Tayrell is known for. This is the main event. Ultra Nightmare Clan Boss. So if you see here, I've got another team which I normally run, which Jareg is the lead. I'm going to sub out Jareg for Tayrell. Tayrell is already speed tuned for Nightmare, so that's all good. Um, and it's also possible with the lineup I've got just to throw it on auto, but uh, I didn't mean to do that. But I'm not going to throw it on auto, so I just want to show you the setup. So, Poison to start with, Shear from my Razin, gets my defense and weaken up. A1's all the time for my Vizier because he just extends a load of buffs. Throw my counters up, and then basically the clan boss comes at me. And in Tayrell, Nine times out of ten actually lands his decreased attack on his first hit. Got to go for it again. There it is. As soon as it's on, because I've got Vizier, I basically don't have to worry about it for the rest of the game. Because Vizier is just mental at extending these debuffs. Look at that. Already up to three. The rest are up to fives. I've got no worries at all. So if I was to manual this fight, I would, I would only ever use A1s with Vizier. What I tend to do if I... If I care about the damage I'm going to do, then I will manual up until the point where I'm full on debuffs. Because Vizier can actually apply debuffs that I don't want on. And if he does that, then I'm going to... Oh, actually, I've got Tayrell a bit quick. I must have some turn meter gain on his mastery somewhere. He should be instantly cleansed here. I've got him too quick. Or I've got turn meter stuff on. Probably because I don't, I've not been running him in clan boss. I might have changed his mastery so they're more effective in other areas of the game. Probably have. Which is why he's out of sync. This is this is how crucial speed tuning is. So all of a sudden I've got somebody who's not running at the right speed or is gaining turn meter somewhere. And it throws out all of the setup. Well, not all of the setup, but you know the, the cleanse which Bad L does is set to perfectly cleanse Tyrell. Um I know what it is. He's just too. He's just faster than Badel. Badel's normally my fastest champ. I brought Tayrell in, and he's actually faster. That's the difference. So I don't think he's got turn meter gain on. I think he's just too quick compared to Badel. But yeah, it just kind of shows you little things like that. That's that's when you start to get to min maxing because yeah, I don't want Tayrell to be missing a turn here. There's no need for him to be because I've actually got set up that can deal with that. So we get ourselves up to what, 8 debuffs, just needs to go one cycle round again. And then once Bad L lays his next two poisons, I can hit auto. And all what's going to happen is Vizier is just going to keep spamming up those, uh, those poisons until the point where the team can't deal with it. So it's, uh, this is a very easy team comp to run. As soon as you get a Vizier, it's kind of game changing really. And I don't think there's many other champions that are as game changing as Vizier. Not that I think he's particularly great anywhere else in the game, personally, but in clan boss he's insane. He's insane because you can just build a team around him and pretty much do what you like. Look at these um, debuffs up, up here already. This is going to be the last turn I need to just go on manual. Now we've got 10 debuffs up. Make sure Vizier lands his first A1. Increase debuffs, we're up to 4. Hit the auto and I will come back and show you how we've got on. So we're coming towards the end. Uh, we've just come to the end. Tayra was one of the last standing. And we're coming at, what, 26.67 million. Um, if you see here, Tayra does 3.3 million damage, which is pretty nice. Uh, more than Jared would do. But in this setup that I've got, Jared is the better champion for me because actually what he does is he brings ally protection to protect Skullcrusher from the second wave of AoE. Um, so for me, my my defense down, uh, my attack down of choice for this lineup is actually Jared. If Ultan was back from 
Holiday at the arena, then it would be him. But Tyrell is is very close. It kind of changed my damage by a couple of million. So yeah, that's not bad for a kind of basically an auto comp. Um, when we close, with definite free key on Ultra Nightmare every time. I'm I'm very reliable in terms of doing around 85 million damage on free keys every time. Um, so look, guys, that's been Tyrell. Quite an in-depth guide. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you all soon.